Hello, and welcome to Thinking Out Loud. I'm Gloria Politis of LTC, your host for today. And I have two special guests in my studio. Let me give you just uh, a little background. A lot of you Lowellians will remember uh, New Year's Eve, I believe it was 1975, when the family of Dr. Hugh Mahoney, he, his wife Ruth, and his son John were murdered. His daughters survived because they were not home. And Maureen Mahoney has started an organization that pays tribute to them and hopefully will get some words out that might help prevent future events like that. There's an event, October 19th, and it will be at the Tewksbury Country Club at 6 p.m., I believe. And I have two of the guest speakers. Maureen will be there. Uh, DA Marion Ryan will be the keynote speaker. And then there are two other speakers. Issa Walder georges who is the executive director of the Center for Hope and Healing, and Jody Marchand. And some of you may recognize that name. She is a survivor of domestic violence. Unfortunately, her daughter was not. So welcome. It's a very serious subject. Um, so if you would like to talk about the event, and uh, then we can go on to ways to address this problem. Absolutely. Okay. I Thank you for having me, first of all. I am incredibly honored to be speaking at this event and to be part of the work that Maureen Mahoney and the committee um, the tribute committee are doing. It is an amazing testament uh, to this family and an amazing example of turning tragedy into progress, into healing. Um, we as an organization, the Center for Hope and Healing, were fortunate enough to be a grantee of the tribute last year. And through that, um, through the generosity of the tribute, we were able to fund uh, work with youth. So how are we gonna change this? issue, this problem, we are going to educate young people. We're going to make them part of the solution. So Maureen was incredibly generous. She came on site. She worked with us. She met some of our young people. And um, we were able to do some really great work with um, our youth. So, Fantastic. Mm -hmm. okay. Jody, do you want to tell your story? Well, um, I'll try to make it short. <laughs> That's right. I lost my time. daughter in February due to domestic violence and um, and I was also injured and to move forward I find it very important to talk about it to whatever age groups the younger the better in my opinion because things start if you grow up with that it's you know it's an example uh, that you learn to live with and that seems probably normal and so you may be attracted to someone that's uh, emotionally abusive not necessarily just physical and so that's why I find it so important to talk about it to as many people as I possibly can. Fantastic. And you have a lot of experience in, in this, and you've worked for the Massachusetts Department of Social Services, uh, Jane Doe Inc., and uh, some of our viewers might not know what Joan Do Jane Doe Inc. was, but if you want to talk about some of the things you've done with that, some of the experiences you've had. Sure. So at the Massachusetts State Coalition Against Sexual and Domestic Violence, which is what Jane Doe Inc. is, it is a coalition of domestic violence and sexual assault programs across the Commonwealth. Like in our community, there's Alternative House, there's us, the Center for Hope and Healing that works against sexual violence. In every community, there are multiple domestic violence and sexual assault programs. And so I think maybe one of our messages is really reach out, right? Just as we as service providers need to reach out into our community, we ask our community to sort of reach out, call hotlines, talk about it, as Jody said so well, tell someone. Um, these issues thrive in silence. They thrive in secrecy. So what we want to do is partner with our communities to break that secrecy. And that's the work I've been doing for 20 plus years now. I started when I was a, a mere child, no. <laughs> but it's important work. I've been at it for a long time and it is, it is life-saving work and so I'm honored to do it. Wonderful, wonderful. So how did you get involved with uh, the Mahoney Foundation and uh, what have you um, 
been well, doing? Where have you been speaking? Where have I? I'm sorry. Been speaking, or you, you've? I've have I been speaking? Um, a sure. little. I. Um, mm -hmm. It's my goal. It's my goal, and yes, I've been speaking at more events, uh, some smaller. I'm getting uh, my my first big event was the uh, high school graduation. We gave out some scholarships, so that was my first time in a big location with the audience, all the lights gone, turned down. So I thought I was like an you know rock star, but <laughs> anyway, I was a little nervous, but I'm getting used to it. And it's important, I, as I said, I think uh, younger and younger, I actually have some time uh, that I'll be speaking to students at the high school my daughter went to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they're in the criminal justice uh, courses, and I'll be speaking to 100, uh, 100 kids out of the high school to talk about what happened and how important it is to spread spread that word wow. so that they know. Wow. Right. And I mean, who better to hear it from than you know, someone who's gone through it? So. Right. The other thing that I think impresses me so much about what Maureen is doing in the tribute as a group is it's difficult to be from a community where, and I'm similar for myself and others, where people might say, this doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful town. We all know each other. It's a beautiful community. And Tuxbury, as many of the communities around here are, beautiful, wonderful communities with great people. But it's important to remember that domestic violence and sexual violence happen in every right. community. No one is immune. So that I think uh, what Maureen is doing is also honorable and also incredibly courageous because she's talking to her community, to her hometown, when she, where she grew up, and saying, this does happen here. Let's come together. Let's make our community safer and healthier um, the way we all want it to be. So I think that's, again, she's just, she impresses me every time I interact with her and hear her. She's incredibly courageous. So. I, I mentioned to you, I've only talked with her on the phone three times. She, she's actually in Fort Lauderdale, Florida now, but she's coming up, obviously, yep. and keeps in touch with everyone here. And uh, actually, she mentioned to me that she thinks about moving back up here. <laughs> <laughs> and Jody Westford is uh, not a community where you would think about this kind of thing happening either, is it? Westford, I'm so sorry. Westford what? what? Is not the kind of community that you expects no, I, this kind of thing to happen? Um, I guess. I mean, no one wants to, it's not a subject people want to talk about, mm -hmm. let's face it. And um, it, yet, however, it's so important because I do personally believe that it's in literally every family in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So it is so important to let people know and, and you know, it's not okay. And there's places they can call. And, and as I said, to educate them so they know the signs. Because I was not hit for 30 years. The, um, my husband was a hunter. He had guns, obviously. And he knew if I were to call 911, there would go his guns, you know, due to a restraining order. So, but it was, it was emotional control, um, jokes at my expense when we went out with friends. Um, you know, we, who I went out with, you know, there's, these are signs that people need to know mm -hmm. because eventually look what happened. He mm -hmm. knew I was, he was losing control and he knew it. Mm -hmm. I was ready to move on. So um, that's our goal at, for Live for Live among others. But, um, and I so, I'm so excited to speak at this event because, um, it is a, a much needed uh, information for this, you know, for these communities. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and reaching young people is so oh. imp so really important. The first, the very first time I met Maureen, she said to me, which again is an example of incredible courage and compassion. The young men who did this to my family, who did this to us what must their lives have been like mm -hmm. for them to have ended up in that situation committing those acts on New Year's Eve of 1975. That is just an mind-blowing kind of compassion, right, and kind of uh, uh, cur courage to sort of think about the lives that those young men had, how they must have been exposed to violence, how they must have been abused and neglected themselves to have ended up committing those kinds of acts. So when we reach youth, 
uh, on October 19th, everyone who's there, that's what we'll be talking about. That's what we'll be encouraging the group to do. Let's break the cycle so that another young person doesn't commit a heinous act and, you know, devastate another family. Right, and that's usually the case. It's mm -hmm. a cycle mm -hmm. that has to be broken. Exactly. Right, right. Now, you've done a lot of training mm -hmm. uh, in this area. Uh, so, as, as you mentioned, you know, there's not an awareness. If it's not physical violence. Very right? often it's so, not. So, uh, that's part of your training to make people aware mm -hmm. of the signs. Mm -hmm. Are there other signs that uh, you... I think Talk Jody about. touched on them. Yeah, they, they can be very subtle. No one begins a relationship with a slap in the face on the first right. date because you'd never get to a second date. It's mm -hmm. slow. It's incremental. It starts off with jealousy, possessiveness. And you think, oh, this person loves me. They're jealous. <laughs> How sweet is that? Mm -hmm. But then you realize that jealousy uh, continues and grows into a possessive control, into a demeaning of the person. They become objectified. So those early signs, that's why reaching young people is so important because they like those things, the jealousy right. and the possessiveness. Yeah. Oh, you really love me. Yeah. We really need to reach young people to say that's not a healthy relationship. Yeah. Yeah. So. so true. Um, I, I look back and there's I mean, there's things I remember that I know were not okay, but then uh, after the fact, and I, you know, was with, I would go to this group uh, where people were all in a different place, but they told me about some of the things that happened right off the bat, such as, you know, um, are you dating anyone else? Well, no. Well, if you're going, I mean, I was. And he said, well, if you're going to, then I think we should break up. Not let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm like, this guy is crazy about me. Mm -hmm. But again, that's why it's so important mm -hmm. to uh, talk to the younger group, to yeah. you know, younger kids, just mm -hmm. to let them know it's not okay. Mm -hmm. right, right. And I've heard too um, that kind of. Cutting people off from their friends and family is, is something that is a sign. Mm -hmm. Good point. You sure you don't do this work or do this training <laughs> yourself? <laughs> I don't, but I've read about it. Excellent. Excellent. Luckily, well I've not done. been a, vi a victim of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but also, what's so important is that what happened to me may not be what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. So just because you know, like for instance, one person may not have access to their checkbook anymore. Um, I knew better. And so I didn't fall into that. Well, just because I didn't fall into that, I fell under other signs. And so that's why, again, the education mm -hmm. is, is so very important. Mm -hmm. And it, it, you're right, the isolation that you speak of like everything else, starts off with an incremental. It's a very normal and natural thing. You get married, you meet someone, you want to establish your own life. Well, let's move to this other community. Let's move far away from home. We want to start our own life. Eventually, you realize all of your supports, your family, your friends who could be there for you in a crisis are no longer around you. So even the isolation can creep up to on an incremental kind of level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes they don't even have to move far away. It's just... Two towns over, yeah. or one town yeah. over, or to Tuxbury, or to Great Gator Lowell. It sits right. right here in our community. Right, right. So you're getting the words out to young people about that, but there are children who are being abused. Um, how do you address them? How do you make them aware? And what, I mean, they can't do anything about it themselves mm -hmm. unless they talk about it, but it just, um, what what's the approach with with children who might be abused? You're asking us uh, what is uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, so well, Issa has done a lot of training mm -hmm. and so right. on. Right. So, yeah. Well, I think what the research says about the most um, important factor of resilience for children is the presence of supportive adults. Again, I go back to the tribute and what Maureen is trying to do. She's trying to create a community where everyone takes responsibility for the safety and well-being of our children in our community. You're right, kids can't many times report on their own. They're not going to say if something's happening at home, right, out of fear, all, all the kinds of reasons. That job is on us as adults. If you see something in your community, if you see a child that you feel is sad or struggling or something's going on, 
again, it takes a lot of courage, but say something. Tell someone. Talk to someone. Identify that that child may be at risk. And then we, we as systems and helpers and neighbors and pastors, and then we can intervene. So um, do you have some places, for instance, if Lowellians here mm -hmm. uh, see something like that, where should they go? Who should they talk to? Or uh, sure. is organizations? Or? Sure. Well, obviously, the Department of Children and Families is the place to report child abuse and neglect. But I do think, you know, Alternative House as an organization, the Center for Hope and Healing as an organization, other organizations in the community who serve children and families are places that anyone can pick up the phone and call and say, I'm worried or concerned. One of the things I'm very grateful for about working in this community is that the nonprofits really work together mm -hmm. as a network. Yeah. And so if I can't provide the service or the support that someone needs, I'll refer them to someplace else in the community and we'll work together. Right, right. Um, I know LTC has just made an initiative to nonprofits about doing shows. I don't know if you were at that meeting or Yes, I heard about it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was that's a wonderful uh, partnership with L T C. Your communication, your media, your support of this community is is tr really tremendous. So thank you. And uh, we're very happy that there was a great response. Twenty two wow. people came to that meeting, right? Mm. And uh, the report to me uh, from our executive director was that they divided into four groups. Uh, and each with a different focus, and that they actually will be producing a monthly show. Uh, I think each of the four groups will take a turn. As it's still in, pro in process. process, but I mean, a fine example of, as you say, how the nonprofits work together mm -hmm. here in Lowell. Mm -hmm. So we're very lucky, mm -hmm. I think, to have so many resources that we can use in, in various areas, but including this particular area. Yeah. I would love to be at this table next year or in future years uh, talking about how successful that's been in Tewksbury, mm -hmm. that Maureen's work and the work of the Tribute has taken those kinds of routes. So that's, that's part of the reason why we're looking forward to being there on October 19th. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And for me, it's just so important to get that word out. Every summer we have a, my daughter was named, her name was Olivia, and every summer we have a Ride for Live, Run for Live. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, started out just in her memory. It's a six mile, 23 mile bike ride and a 5K run. And it's a great day. And so every year we're able to donate money to uh, local, you know, places, Alternative House and, um, uh, you know, several places. And again, it's sort of a way to show that we're here to help support each other because Live for Live, it's, we've only been together five years. So we're, um, we're going to support people that are established and help them grow and grow and grow and help, you know, with more services. That's terrific. And talk, talk about Maureen having courage. Uh, you, Jody, are also mm -hmm. a person Thank who you. I, you have turned a real tragedy I have into. To do, I, yeah. I will keep Olivia's memory alive yeah. uh, any way I possibly can. That's wonderful. Wonderful. Now, you did not move out of the situation, although you were. You said you were thinking about moving out of the situation. Uh, my, you were in. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, Yes. Um, unfortunately, there were many times, believe me, and, you know, financially was a, a big scare for me. I was in the type of, um, I was in a type of uh, job that was, uh, it was commission. So I was scared. But had I, I really feel, had I gotten out that door, it was just that initial, so I mean, that's another thing Live for Live has talked about is, you know, maybe if we could somehow provide, you know, someone their first and last month or <laughs> security deposit, something, just to get out because you think you can't do it, but you can mm -hmm. in some way, whether it's health through family or through nonprofits. And uh, I'm determined to somehow, right? that's one of my goals. Wonderful. And, and do you have advice for women who are struggling with this? Or? Sure. But even before that, I just want to mention 
um, what, what you said reminded me of another grantee of the, of the tribute, which is Tewksbury Police Department. And what some of the funds helped do was allow the police department to work with survivors who need something simple that can be life-saving, changing locks. Mm. so that this person is long, no longer in the home but they can't just come back so in or break in. So it allowed the police department to be able to provide those kinds of concrete resources in the community. So kudos to, again, the tribute for that and to Tewksbury PD. Um, in terms of advice, that's, I think Jody's advice was a good one. That first step is going to be the hardest. So talking to family, talking to friends, talking to a professional, once you get over that first step and that first hurdle, um, things will get easier um, and for people to know that they're not alone. And there are places yep. where people can go, even though they don't have the financial wherewithal, but they need to see, know about those places. That's the thing. I think it didn't occur to me mm -hmm. to try and get help. Um, honestly, and, and that's why talking about it is so important because they have to know I'll get help right. you know some way shape or form right. whether it's uh, legal help or you know somewhere to live or what have you um, it, I just it just it needs to be talked about more and more it's for that one of that one of the reasons that being right. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you mentioned uh, the police department and I guess we we have evidence that Police have come a long way. I mean, there was a time when domestic violence calls were not well responded to, if you will, at least uh, for the woman who was the victim. Mm -hmm. And I think, I'll, have you seen, I mean, you, you've been in this for how many years now? Yeah, absolutely, so, long time. <laughs> so you've seen progress? You've oh, seen, absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Tewksbury, again, is a great example of police departments that are progressive, having a specific officer who's dedicated to that. Mm -hmm. Um, and she gets calls all the time and she's responding and she's helping people with the small things like changing locks and the big things like going to court and restraining orders and uh, all kinds of things. So I think that model is a strength in Tewksbury that the community can definitely rely on. So they have, they have made a great deal of progress. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that model will, will spread? I hope so. Is that, uh, I hope so. Is that something that uh, is talked about too? When, when uh, I don't know if District Attorney Marion Ryan, who is the keynote speaker, is yes. going to mention something about that. I hope so. I hope mm. so. But I think uh, definitely, probably in Maureen's talk, and I know I'm assuming that Tewksbury police folks are going to be there. So it would be a great opportunity to hear from them directly about what they're doing. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh. So, um, did we get the website address for Maureen or? Yes, okay. Uh, so it will go up on, on screen. There it is, Mahoney Tribute. Oh, fantastic. .org. Okay. So I guess um, also if people want tickets to the event, they could go there. Is mm -hmm. that it? Okay, that's very good. October 19th, 6 p.m., Tuxbury Country Club. Club. It's going to be wonderful. Fantastic. I heard the food is great. It is. Really? Oh, that, that's, that's a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> that's a bonus. And I believe um, the first tribute that was done was last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was very well attended, I understand, mm -hmm. from Maureen. Yeah. So they're hoping to uh, bring people out for this one as well. And again, it's Voices Against Violence. Mm -hmm. So have you any more that you would like to say about uh, spreading the word? And, no, I mean, I think the work of the tribute sort of says it all in terms of the need to give voice to these issues. It's not easy in our communities and our families, but the importance of breaking the silence um, as our primary way to end violence. So again, I'm grateful to the tribute and um, to Maureen specifically for uh, her work around these issues. That's great. I also say um, you may not think it's happening to you, but you may mm -hmm. see it happening to someone you love or a good friend, and maybe it's a good night out for that. So that for that purpose, maybe you know, bring the person that you're you're thinking because that's important for them to hear um, that something doesn't feel right, and so if they hear what's happening, you know what's going on out there, they may it may if we. 
to me, if it affects one person, it, it was worth it. Great. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm just wondering, I know you have a background of doing a lot of training and workshops and that kind of thing. Are, are there workshops that will be going on or have that been I don't know. Planned or, I don't yeah. think it's been planned, but that would be a great thing to bring up on yeah, that on nice. that evening. I think this is the step. This is the okay. beginning stages of something that's going to be uh, really impactful in Tewksbury. So that could be a wonderful idea that gets on the table. Mm. Terrific. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So um, again, it's going to be on October nineteenth, which is what evening of the week? Thursday, Thursday I think. A a Thursday. Wednesday. Wednesday. I think it's a Wednesday. It's a oh, Wednesday. Okay. <laughs> great, great night to break up the monotony and go out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely, and, and great speakers, yes. obviously. And uh, Maureen, I'm sure, will reach people. And of course, District Attorney Marion Ryan. I've heard her speak, and she is a very good and powerful speaker. Very I think powerful, so, yes. and obviously has a a lot of background and experience with cases of this nature. So. I just have to say, working with her, she is so upbeat and so positive about a really great night, and um, and I think she's absolutely right. I, I'm very excited. It's good, and I know she's done things with with young people in, in various towns too. So uh, that target audience is is one that she is well aware of too. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Well, I thank you so much thank for you. being yes. here, and uh, wish you all the luck. Uh, unfortunately, I have choir that night, mm. choir rehearsal, and I've already missed a few. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I will be thinking of you, and uh, please support. I think this is so important. It's um, we have, I think, no idea how widespread uh, this can be, and how yes. how that making that one step, which is so difficult for people in that situation, could really save save life. Mm-hmm. So, Thank you again for being on Thinking Out Loud. Thank you for tuning in to Thinking Out Loud, and uh, we'll see you next time.